Today, we are going to be talking about our level two COPE certification knots. Okay, so these are the knots if you're trying to get your level two certification for running a COPE or, you know, running the COPE's course, you will need to know these knots. And I'm going to throw in a couple extras just for fun. So the first knot we'll be talking about will be the figure eight follow through. Then we'll be going through the double fisherman's knot, the Prussix knot. We'll be doing a fast pack which is a real kind of fun thing, not required, but a cool thing. And then we'll last, we'll show you guys how to daisy chain a uh, loop of webbing. Makes it a little easier to store, okay? So let's start out with our figure eight follow through. This is very similar to the figure eight on a bite or the sport knot, as some people call it. But we're only gonna do one and then we're gonna follow it through. So this is how you would climb in at any, uh, you would actually tie in at any gym or actually when you're climbing outdoors, if you're actually rock climbing. So real popular knot, okay? So what you're gonna do, we're gonna take our rope, you're gonna find the spot on you, and you're gonna have to do the knot several times to find exactly where it matches where you're at. So for me, if I do it to the center of my chest, and I go all the way out to the tip of my fingers here, that's about roughly where it needs to be to tie a fairly good knot. Now this is a little thinner rope, so it'll probably come out a little long. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pinch it at that time. And I'm just going to do a single figure eight. So I'm going to take the figure eight. I'm going to come all the way around. So I have my cross. I'm going to come all the way underneath and all the way through the top. Okay. Now, once I've come through the top, we get a single figure eight. Now, this knot is used when we're tying it to something that doesn't have like a carabiner away where we're going to clip in. So this is great for if you're tying into your harnesses, you're tying into fixed loop points, you're using it for all kinds of different, there's all kinds of little ways, but usually it's for tying into a harness or into a main tie-in point on a you know commercial harness. So we're gonna use this figure eight here. So we're gonna come up, we're gonna come over the top and we're gonna see this guy right here. We're gonna wanna make sure that we pull in nice and tight and we're going to want to come to the outside loop. So whatever this guy is, we're going to push it to the outside. And we're going to, you know, you'll see it cross off to this side. So we want to push it to the right. Come up through the bottom. Just like it already is. So we're coming up just like it already is. And we're going to pull it nice and tight. We want to make sure we're tight because it will lengthen as we tie it, as we pull the knot tight. So then we're going to come all the way around here and we're gonna dive back underneath. So as we dive back underneath, we wanna come on the outside, just like this, and we pull it nice and tight, and then we're gonna come around the top of the knot, okay? So we pull around the top, we come up through the bottom, and we tie it in, okay? Now, the way this works is our dead end, or our end that's here, is on top of the knot. So if we're looking at it, it would be the top of the knot and our main line going to our climber or going to our belayer is on the bottom. So when we pull on this, the knot actually pulls here and this one tightens on the top. This keeps your knot from crushing. This helps the knot make it much easier to untie. Then we're actually gonna tighten the knot. So we're gonna go ahead and use opposite sides. So we're gonna pull on one end and pull. We're gonna pull on the other end and pull. And then we're gonna do it one more time, pull and pull again. And like I said, I'm crossing it as I'm pulling. And that knot comes out really nice and tight. We're gonna go ahead and count it up. Two, four, six, eight, 10. It's the only knot that comes out is 10. So two, four, six, eight, 10. Comes out really clean. If it's a little long like this, we can always tie a safety knot on there to clean it up. We want a minimum of a good fist, just a little over you know, if you got really small hands, maybe about six inches, usually four or five inches is usually good. This is a, you know, a tension knot that won't actually untie if it's tied properly. So there's no reason for a backup knot. But if you, if your group wants to use backup knots, that's totally fine. But usually that's just to take up the extra slack of the rope if you made it a little long. So once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and untie it. What's nice about this knot is it always comes untied very easily. So we can go ahead and untie it. We're gonna come all the way through and we're gonna go ahead and tie it one more time. So again, we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing. Go out to the center of our chest here. We're gonna pinch that point so we know exactly where we're gonna be. We're gonna bring it down 
we're going to do our cross all the way around the cross and back through gets us our figure eight. Okay, now that we've got our figure eight, we're going to spin it towards ourselves because this is how we would tie in. Now, a lot of people go through the top. A lot of people come from the bottom. It does not matter. Um, some places require that you come through the top. So you're going through your, you know, your top of your harness. Remember, this is not tying into your belay loop. This is for tying in directly into your harness. So you go either through the metal ring or a single ring. Some harnesses don't have two tying points. Most harnesses, the nicer harnesses, will have a tie-in point at the top, actually on the belt, and a tie-in on your legs. So we're going to go ahead and come through. Now this knot, we've tied it the opposite direction this time. So see how the, it's coming the opposite direction here? We're going to pull this one off to the left-hand side this time. We're going to come up through. We're going to pull it nice and tight. We're going to come around the knot. We're going to stay on the outside. Remember, we're coming around on the outside. We're going to come down through like this. We're going to come underneath, you know, we're coming all the way around following the rope here. And we're going to come back underneath and up through. Okay. Now, what does that give us? If we looked really hard, we can count it up. Two, four, six, eight, ten. So we know we've got a good knot here. Do we have at least a fist? Yes, that's about exactly the length of knot I like to see. Now, people tuck it and do other things like that. It makes it harder to untie. I don't recommend doing that. If you're going to, just tie a simple knot. You can tie just a simple overhand knot. You can do all kinds of different things to take up that extra slack. It's up to you. Once we've got it to this point, we want to go ahead and pull. Pull across. Pull across again. Pull across. And we want to make sure that as we're pulling, that this rope, the dead end, is on top. And the part going to the belayer is on the bottom or in the middle of the knot here. So when I pull on that, it's going to crush down on the knot here. If it ends up up here, what ends up happening is it crushes the whole knot. makes it very hard to untie. Is it any less strong? No, it's not. We've proven that over and over again. It's not any less strong, but it is way harder to untie. And this is the way you should be doing it. So that is the figure eight follow through. Same exact way you would do it if you have a regular knot. Now, so our regular way of tying in at our Cove's course, we do the sport knot. So and that's just a simple, same idea here. We're just gonna fold it over, come through, cross it over, get our knot here. Now the one thing we're gonna see is that we still have the knot tied properly, just having to be lucked out here. Now we're gonna go ahead, make sure that the one on the bottom is going to be the one going to the repeller. And then this knot, see how we've got the ropes here? A lot of times what I'll do is I'll spin this guy and that'll give me a little bit tighter knot. So it gets the knot here. Then I'm gonna do the cross and the cross and the cross and the cross and go ahead and tighten it up. And this knot will come loose really easy compared to other knots just because you have the ability to now break the knot push it all through, even if it's been loaded multiple, multiple times, okay? All right, so let's do the double fisherman's knot. Now, the double fisherman knot is very similar to one other knot we do, which is the um, safety knot or stopper knot. So a stopper knot on the end of the rope, you just have your... You have your end of your rope there. You're doing any kind of thing you're doing on the end of the rope. You're going to come around, around, and back through. That's going to give you that stopper knot problem. It's the same knot we use when we're using a safety knot. Now we're just going to use it to tie two ropes together. So we're going to use the orange and black rope so you guys can kind of see how this works. We're going to take our orange rope. We're going to lay it over the top. We're going to cross over. Remember the cross. We always make the cross. We're going to come all the way around and we're going to go through the cross just like we would with our stopper knot or our uh, safety knot. Okay. Now remember, this would be a single fisherman. 
So now we're going to make it into a double. We're going to go ahead and we're going to follow the look, the rope, the other direction. So whatever one we come in here, if the rope's going this way, I put the next rope this way. This one happens to be coming backwards. So I'm going to keep it in that motion. I'm going to come all the way around, make my cross. So you can see, you got your, some people call it a Jesus fish, but that's your cross there. You're going to come all the way around. We're going to pull up the cross. So we have a cross in between. We're going to feed our ropes through the cross and we're going to pull it tight. Now, again, we want to have a minimum of a fist coming out on each side. That's really important. And then as we pull the knot together, it automatically tightens up against each other. Now, if you tied it properly, you will see it intertwine. So the black one is right up against the orange one and they're fitting together nice and tight. If I flip it over on the other side, it counts up four straight loops. That's the way this knot should look. If I don't tie it that way and I actually get it backwards, is it any less strong? Not that we can tell. It seems to be just as strong, so it's not the end of the world. But if you tie it properly, this is what it should look like, intertwined perfectly like that. Okay, so let's do that one more time. And it pulls apart, pulls back together. So it should be doing that if it's done right. Now, usually this is for tying loops like this, cordelettes or safety knots for doing backup on repels and things like that. So let's go ahead and pull this through. Okay, so we're going to go over our black rope. And remember, this would be the same rope if we wanted to or if we're just joining two pieces of rope together. Remember, we'll use a water knot if we're joining two pieces of webbing together. If we're joining two pieces of rope together. This is a really useful knot that works really well. Okay, so we get our cross. We're going to come underneath. We're going to open up our cross, and we're going to come through the center of the cross. Just like that. Okay. Now we take a look at our rope. It's coming over this way. So it's coming out of the knot this way and coming around. So I'm going to follow that same direction. So I'm going to come up, make our X. We're going to come all the way around and pass through the center of the X. Once we've done it, we pull it and it should come together. They should interlock and we flip it over and we have one, two, three, four, you know, loops works really well okay so once we've got that down we've got our two fists up here we made sure we're nice and tight this is a knot that is very hard to untie once it's done so usually i use this for cordelettes and for rappel safeties okay so let's go ahead and untie that okay now our final knot that is actually required is going to be the Prussix knot. So I'm going to go ahead and set this orange rope over here out to the side. This is a brake safety and I use these all the time for doing repels. And if you watch our repelling videos, you'll see this is how we stop uh, the person from sliding or needing gloves or anything else like that when they're repelling. So we're going to take, I'm going to stick it underneath. So this is our main rope. You, the one trick with this is you always have to have the Prussix knot rope thinner than the main rope. So let's say this is number eight. This needs to be number six. I usually like to go two sizes down. So if this is number 10, number eight would be okay. I like number seven, you know, seven millimeter rope all the way across the board. Seems to work really good for cordelettes and for Prussix knots works great. I also like six millimeter when I'm doing my thinner ropes, but this, this works really good. Six and seven is, is the way to go. So we're gonna go and lift up the loop. We're gonna take our knot, we're gonna pass it into the, the loop, and we're gonna come all the way around, okay? So now we have one loop. We're gonna pass it through the loop again, back underneath. Now we have two loops. We're going to do this one more time at least. So we've got a loop here still. We're going to pass the knot in and all the way through. Now we're going to sit there and we're going to dress the knot. I'm going to dress the knot up so it's in good shape here. And we're going to keep doing it until we have three loops on each side. So one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. Now the way this knot works is if it's dressed properly and you've ran it up nice and tight, the knot should slide both directions. But if you pull on it on the actual end or where the knot is, where you're tied in at, 
If you pull, it stops in both directions. It will tie, actually cinch to the rope and actually not. It constricts on the rope and won't let it go up or down. This is a really useful knot for all kinds of things. Like I said, I do use it a lot for repelling. Um, again, watch the repelling videos. I'm going to do that one more time so everybody can see it. Okay. Now, you can do this. You don't have to have a knot in the ropes. You can actually just use two ends coming out, which is totally fine. I usually like to have the knot because it makes it real easy to tie that way. So I'm just going to go ahead and pass through. Pass through again. Pass through one more time. Hopefully you guys can see this. And we all want to end up with our loops, our loop, our main loop on the outside and our knot coming out of the center. Okay, so our knot, you know, our knot being this knot here or the ends of our lines coming out through the center. So if you're we looking at it, it's going to be those two center loops. Okay, so if we flip it over, we have either six, you can count it six or you can count it three. I usually count three on each side, so I go one, two, three, one, two, three. I know that I've counted it. Can you do more? Absolutely, but the more you put in them, the more friction you'll have. So three seems to be a really good number. Two seems to be not enough and tends to get stuck. More than three tends to usually be a little tough. So if you're having a real slippery rope, adding an extra loop in there can sometimes help, but this usually does it. Again, it will slide up and down, but if you pull on it, it breaks and then breaks this way too. So this is great if you want to put a handle somewhere in like let's say you're doing the giant swing and you want to put a handle in the middle of the rope. These are real great. They can put their hands in there. You don't want to have them put their hands all the way in, but they can put their hand on there to give themselves a handle. Even if the rope's tensioned, you can put this on there and give them an area to hold on to. Okay? So, great knot. Definitely the way to go. Now remember, a lot of people don't like putting it, you know, the knot at the end here, so you can just adjust it. So you can readjust your knot and redress your knot so that the rope actually pulls off to the side here, up here, and leaves the knot down here in the middle. For what we use it for in repelling, it's plenty safe even with the knot. It's well over the forces we're going to be dealing with. Okay? So that is the Prusix knot. Okay? So now for your two bonus knots. Okay? These are your bonuses. Okay? This is one that I think is super useful. This is for paracord. This happens to be, uh, this has to be tent uh, bungee. So this goes inside your tent poles, which is a pain when you get it because it comes with a big giant knot. So if you are working at REI, please learn how to tie this knot so that you can actually keep it from pulling through. Okay. So what we're going to do, if we take the, the main line here and we pull, it will pull all the way through without knotting up. And it will just keep pulling all the way to the very end. Okay. At the very end, you get the last little bit. You pull it all the way, and it disappears if you tie it right. Okay. So the way we do this, we're going to put it on our hand. So we have a little bit of leeway over the top. We're going to go around our pinky. We're going to come up around our thumb, and we're going to hold our hand way out wide, and we're going to keep whipping around. Now, this is really good if you guys are up there and you're taking down ropes, and there's all that paracord at the end. I highly recommend doing this because it keeps it from knotting up the paracord, which is a pain to deal with. You go all the way through it. We also have a fast packing video. I show you a couple different ways to do this. You could use stakes on the ground if you wanted to do it with big rope. Definitely doable. Once we get down to kind of the last little bit here, I'm gonna pull it off my thumbs, or off my thumb and my pinky. I'm gonna come up, and then I'm gonna cross underneath, and we're gonna wrap. Once we wrap it, we come all the way to the very last little bit. We're gonna tie a clove hitch, so we're gonna pull out a leech, cross over, come underneath. Our axe there, pull tight, get our clove hitch going here, and we've now tied it off. And again, if we pull on it, it pulls all the way through, okay? This is great for storage of paracord. Any small rope you guys have around the house, it's well worth its weight in gold. Works up to about eight millimeter pretty well. You might have to stick some stakes in the ground. Remember, you wanna not have it in anything solid because it does kind of constrict on itself and you wanna be able to, whatever it is, pull the stakes out to make it work. 
Okay, so let's say we've got a piece of webbing that we want to get rid of at the end of the day and we want to put it away properly. We're going to go ahead and we're just going to tie a loop in the bottom. So we take our loop, so we come to the, the center, or you can come to the ends, it doesn't really matter. I usually do the ends. So I'm going to go ahead and, well, let's start over here on the end, okay? So we've got our water knot here, guys. This is to show you that you want at least 10 to 12 inches on this particular knot. It will cause problems if you don't and can actually suck up, which is why we use the Wrap 3 Pull 2 design that we do. So the reason I always go to the ends instead of the middle is because it's hard to find the middle, but I can always find the ends. So I'm going to go ahead and find the ends here. I'm going to tie a knot in it by just a pull through knot. So I'm going to cross it over. I'm going to push it up through. Once I've done that, oh, whoops, I still got a knot in it. So we're going to go ahead and put our two ends together. We do a loop over and we pull the loop up through. So what's cool about this particular ending way of doing this on this particular one is if when I'm done, if I pull it, it disappears. So we're going to do that one more time. So just it's just a simple overhand knot and push through. Once you've got it all pushed through, we're just going to do small loops. So about two inch loop, push through, two inch loop, push through. You can do this with your ropes while you're getting ready to wash them. If you wash them in wash machines, this works really well for ropes. You double them up or triple them up or quad them up and you push them all through. You push it through. You push it through. Okay. And then when you get to the last one, pull it off and it's knotted on both ends and it won't come untied. That way you can go ahead and hang it up inside the conics box or on your truck. This is how I hang them in my truck. It looks just like that. It makes them take up about a you know half the room, maybe even a little quarter of the room that it normally would, but it keeps them all straight. And then all you gotta do is just untie it. And as you pull on it, it pulls all the loops out. And at the very last loop, it disappears and you have your webbing ends. So great knots here, guys. Hope this was helpful. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please leave comments. Comments are always welcome, even bad comments. But uh, tell us what we're doing wrong. Tell us what we're doing right. Tell us what you'd like to see next. And as always, guys, have a great day. And remember, this is only for review.